Pets are an amazing thing. They're so great we continue adopting them even after knowing they may not live long. But sometimes our pets outlive us. And in this particular case, raise a family with the only goal of getting revenge for the murder of his master. In today's episode, I will be talking about the original Splinter, a very, very gifted pet rat. Splinter was created by Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird for TMNT number one. Since the Ninja Turtles were a parody of martial arts movies and Jack Kirby and Frank Miller comics, many elements were taken from those stories. Some things are quite obvious, like changing the Hand Clan into the Foot Clan. Or in the case of Splinter, he was a nod at Daredevil's mentor, Stick. Splinter was Hamato Yoshi's pet rat since the time they lived in Chihaya, Japan. Splinter liked imitating his master's movements, which greatly amused Yoshi. However, this idyllic life wasn't exactly peaceful. Yoshi was a shadow warrior for the Foot Clan. Yoshi had a rival in Oroku Nagi, a man from the Foot Clan that also wanted Yoshi's girlfriend, Tang Shen. One day, Nagi tried to force Shen to love him and got caught red-handed by Yoshi, who in a moment of rage killed Nagi. This event brought dishonor to the Hamato family. Killing another member of the clan was an unspeakable act, so Yoshi and Shen packed their things and Splinter and moved to America. Yoshi opened a martial arts school in New York and lived with Shen for a few years. Now you may ask yourself how old Splinter was, as rats don't live that long. Well, you'll need to leave logic to aside for this video, because we're talking about a bilingual martial artist rat, okay? Anyway, Splinter ended up witnessing the murder of Tang Shen at the hands of the Shredder, a man whose identity was Oroku Saki, Nagi's brother. When Yoshi came home, he was killed by the Shredder. In the struggle, Splinter's cage broke open and the pet rat was able to escape to the street. Splinter started living in the sewers until one day he witnessed four pet turtles falling down the drain in an instant that was another nod to Daredevil. A canister of ooze dropped from a TCRI truck in the incident and its contents poured over the turtles. For some reason, Splinter saw this and decided to clean and protect them inside a coffee can. He took them to his burrow in the sewers. The next day, Splinter woke up to an exciting development. The turtles had doubled in size, and Splinter himself was becoming bigger and smarter. The turtles reached their final size within their first year of life, and then one day, they started talking. It wouldn't take long for all of them to develop speech, and before they knew it, they were having conversations. The turtles started imitating Splinter. Inspired by his master, he decided to teach them all he knew about ninjutsu. After finding a book on Renaissance art in a storm drain, he gave the turtles their names. Many years later, the turtles were experienced enough to come out to the surface and fight. So Splinter sent them after the Shredder to avenge the lives of Yoshi and Shen. It is worth noting that at this point, Splinter considered himself at the end of his life. The turtles fought and killed Oroku Saki, but the Foot Clan remained active. With the Shredder dead, Splinter's original motivation was fulfilled and the turtles were free to be whatever they wanted to be. However, their origin would soon come back to haunt them. One day, the turtles arrived home to find it almost destroyed, with clear signs that Master Splinter had a fight against Baxter Stockman's mousers. The turtles weren't sure if Splinter was alive or not, so they asked April to let them stay with her while they searched for their master. Splinter survived the mouser invasion and passed out somewhere in the sewers, where he was found by two TCRI workers. They quickly took them to their headquarters and nursed him back to hell. When Splinter recovered, he was shocked to discover he was rescued by aliens. After seeing Splinter faint again, the Utrams were worried about him having a heart attack, so they put him in suspended animation for observation and care. One day, the turtles ran into the TCRI building. Recognizing the initials from the canister of ooze that mutated them, they decided to infiltrate it to find out what it was. They found Splinter inside in the suspended animation tube and assumed the worst. After a brief battle, the turtles were accidentally transported to a different planet. On their return, Splinter explained everything to them, and the Utrams explained the origin of the ooze. After the Utrams left Earth, the turtles and Splinter returned to normal, living at April's apartment. But things weren't really normal. 
the Shredder was mysteriously back from the dead and planned an attack on the Turtles. This attack forced them to escape to Casey Jones' farmhouse in Northampton for a whole year. The Turtles eventually returned to the city and defeated the Shredder, although he wasn't really a Rokusaki. The Turtles and Splinter continued living in Northampton, but they were free enough to come and go from the city. They even went on a pilgrimage to Japan, to Chihaya, the village where Splinter used to live with his master. This may have been a point in Splinter's life when he finally decided to let the past go. But without a purpose, things weren't clear anymore. It was probably during this time that Splinter met Hamato Hana, the niece of Hamato Yoshi and possibly the last survivor of that family. Unfortunately, by the end of that story, she too committed murder in a similar burst of rage as her uncle. Not able to escape the same fate as everyone involved in the cycle of revenge that started with Oroku Nagi. Splinter started getting frustrated with age. This led him to feeling tired and annoyed at everybody. This attitude made April abandon her life in Northampton and move to the West Coast. Splinter's frustration made it impossible for him to meditate. With the turtles fighting in the city, he went on a journey through nature, and he found the abandoned facility where the turtles fought the Rat King. With a false step, Splinter fell into the same silo Rat King fell before and broke one leg. Unable to climb out of it, Splinter was at nature's mercy, and he would undoubtedly starve to death unless someone found him. During the two months he was trapped there, he started talking to the Rat King, who pushed him into eating rats for survival. Splinter thought himself above that, but it was clear that the rats would eat him sooner or later. Splinter eventually gave up on his humanity and started eating rats to survive. In this dire situation, Splinter learned that the tight beliefs he held were going to kill him. By the time Splinter got better enough to walk and climb out of there, he found the Rat King's dead body, making it unclear if he was a vision or a ghost. After his return to the farm, the turtles, April, and Casey returned, bringing a new addition to the family, Shadow. But Splinter and Donatello stayed far from the farm in the forest. Donatello needed time to heal and reflect, and he would keep Splinter company. April, who recently lost her father, told Splinter that she felt like she had two fathers all this time. Splinter made peace with her and called her his daughter. While living with Donatello, both of them had visions of the future. In Splinter's dream, he was killed by one of the turtles. In Donnie's vision, he was visiting Chihaya in the far future. When the two sat down to discuss these visions, Splinter understood Donnie's vision. He was at Chihaya because he was going to bury him. Splinter went away after this happened, and that was when things got really complicated. At some point between Volumes 2 and 4 of TMNT, Splinter switched places with an alternate version of himself. Perhaps this was a response to the vision he had, but he ended up becoming the daimyo of the Battle Nexus. Not much is known about why or how, but perhaps the turtle that would kill him would be from a different universe. By the time Volume 4 went into an indefinite hiatus, Leonardo was about to meet Master Splinter in the Battle Nexus. This would have been quite the surprise, considering he had already cremated who he thought to be Splinter. This alternate Splinter lived many years with the Turtles and was some kind of a grandfather figure for Shadow. But he also had a vision of his own death when he was offered the role of the Rat King by the Pantheon. When he finally died of a heart attack, he probably became the new Rat King. In his later years, this Splinter retired in Northampton with the occasional visits of other powerful beings like Metalhead and Stainless Steel Steve. But perhaps because of that vision Donatello had, he decided to take a sample of Splinter's fur before cremating him. While researching a cure for Raphael's supernatural mutation, Donnie cloned a new brain-dead Splinter to test a solution. But then he compared the DNA with an old sample of the original Master Splinter. He discovered that the Splinter they cremated wasn't the same one that raised them. Then again, the title went into an indefinite hiatus. But there is a missing chapter between Volumes 2 and 4. The Image Book, which was later removed from the canon. In that volume, Splinter would mutate into a bat, and the Turtles would need to find him, cure him, and reunite him with his soul. But as I said, this story was removed from canon when Mirage Comics started TMNT Volume 4. 
The fact that I had to reference so many videos demonstrates how essential to the mythos Splinter was, even though he was supposed to die not long after the very first issue. If you want to know more about why the Rat King was present at the moment of the alternate Splinter's death, check out this video.